Sıra var. Children, 
They are the Zena of this whole dunya. What is Zena? The glitter, the glamour, the attraction, the beautification. You take away money and take away children from your life. What is left? Ask the people who are poor and have no money. Ask the people who have no children, husbands and wives, no parents. Ask them what is the value of money and children. This ayah was revealed in Mecca and it's a Mecca surah because the Meccans used to be proud and arrogant of their money and children. So Allah SWT is teaching them a lesson of wisdom to realize that what is money and what is children? Why are you being so happy of your money and your children in dunya? Because they're only for dunya. Allah is saying, Ummalu wal baneen wal baneen zina tul hayat al dunya. Money and children are only the glitter and glamour of this dunya. They are not the baqiyat al salihat. They are not the righteous good deeds everlasting. Baqi means everlasting. One of the 99 names of Allah is al baqi, the ever living, everlasting. Allah never dies. Allah is not born. Allah is the beginning and end. And that's why Allah was saying in Surah Al Rahman, Kullu man alayya fad wa yabqa. Same word, baqi yabqa. Kullu man alayya fad. Everything that is in this dunya will perish, will vanish. The only thing that will remain in this dunya is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah is saying that your money and your children are only the attraction of this dunya. They're not going to be with you in Akhirah. There is no guarantee. Are we guaranteed? Can you guarantee that you will have your son and daughter with you in Jannah? Can you guarantee you will have your money with you in Jannah? Can you guarantee that you will have your money in your grave? Look at Steve Jobs. Apple founder, he made so many Apple products. Where is he right now? He's dead. He's in his grave. How many Apple iPhones Steve Jobs has in his grave? How many iPads and Macs and whatnot had he has? He came, he left the dunya. He didn't take anything with him. And that's the reality of life. This is life, my dear brothers and sisters of Islam. That is what Allah is saying. That wake up, wake up before it's too late. Don't get so engrossed and mesmerized in the money and money-making business and raising kids that you forget. Today you have money, tomorrow you won't have money. Today you're rich, tomorrow you're poor. Today you have children, tomorrow you don't have. Many children, they die at young age. Many children, they die before their parents. Many children, they, they, are, they are dead when they are born, so it's still birth. Many children die before even being born. We call that miscarriage. The mother has a miscarriage or abortion. It's gone. Nobody is guaranteed. And that's what Allah is trying to make us understand in this ayah. That look, money and children are just the glitter and glamour attraction of the dunya. They will not take you to Akhira unless and until you do what? said in the hadith, are the dhikr and adhkar. Uh, these supplications, the invocations that we make. Like in one riwayah, there are many riwayahs about this Baqi to Salihad. Baqi means everlasting, Salihad, righteous, goodness. So in one hadith, Rasul said that Baqi to Salihad is Takbir, Allah Akbar, Tahleel, La ilaha illallah, Tahleel, Alhamdulillah. And that is and Tasbih, SubhanAllah. Meaning the more you say Allah Akbar, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, the more you say that, that is Baqiyatu Salihat. In another riwayah, Rasulullah said, your Baqiyatu Salihat are your Salat. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, or your brain. This is, will remain with you in your grave and also on Yom Al-Qiyamah and this will take you to Jannah. Baqiyatu Salihat, in another riwayah he said, is the Amal Salihat that you do. The righteous good things you do in society. You help a brother, help a sister in need. You build a masjid, you build a school, you build an orphanage. These things are Baqiyatu Salihat, meaning what remains with you in Akhira, what remains with you in Barzakh, which is the grave. Now here is the question. Why Allah speak about Baqiyatu Salihat in this ayah? Second, and first he talk about Al-Mal wal banun Because Mal and banun is something useful, it will be spent. Children will be born, children will die. Children will come, children will be gone. Money will come, money will be gone. It will not stay. But you can make your children and your money Baqiyatu Salihat. Oh, that is the crux of the issue. 
This is the message Allah giving us in this ayah. How to ensure, how to make sure that my children and my money become baqiyat al salihat khayran inda rabbika. Become with our Lord, meaning how? We spend our money wisely. We don't waste our money. We don't make it expensive, like the Allah said in the Quran, that don't uh, be spendthrift. Don't be a spendthrift. The spendthrifts, people wasting money, are the brothers of Satan. And that is why money needs to be invested first in who? In the children. Invest money in your children. Give them a good education. Give them ta'aleem and tarbiyah. Give them the usloom. Give them the khuluq. Give them the suluk. Train them. Because this is your biggest investment, your children. Money comes second. Children come first. If there's no children, there's no use of money. There are thousands of mothers and fathers right now sleeping in their graves. And their children are alive in this dunya. And the children don't even have tawfiq, don't even have the encouragement to say, Ya Allah, iqfir li abi. Ya Allah, iqfir li ummi. They don't have the tawfiq from Allah to make dua for their dead parents and dead mother and father. And, oh Allah, forgive my mother, forgive my father. Why? Because those parents didn't invest in their children. They didn't do the tarbiyah and ta'aleem. They didn't leave behind children as an investment that becomes baqiyat al salihat, sadaqa jariya. Make them memorize the Quran. Make them learn the meanings of the Quran. Make them learn the adab and khuluq in the Quran. Make them learn the sunnah of Muhammad. Make them learn the adab. Make them mu'addab. A child who respects their parents will also respect their elders in society. A child who disrespects his or her parents at home will also disrespect elders in society. And that is why Rasulullah said in a very beautiful hadith, he said, Man lam yarham sabirana wa lam yuwaqfir kabirana fa laysa minna. Oh, Allah alayhi salatu wa Translation, whoever from amongst us does not have mercy, rahmah on our children, meaning forgive and forget them, ignore their mistakes, ignore their shortcomings and, mis and misgivings, have rahmah on them. Don't be rigid with your children or anybody's children. Don't be very staunch and stingy with the children that pick up something and pick up a fight, but rather have rahmah, have mercy with them. That is what Rasulullah is saying in the beginning of the hadith. Man lam yarham sabirana. Sabir means little. You're big, you're an uncle, you're an aunt. This small kid, what, it's not even your size or your level, your rukba. You need to have rahmah towards them. Forgive their mistakes, ignore their uh, rude awakenings that they're having. And then the second part of the hadith is for the youngsters, for the young children. Allah is saying, I mean, Rasulullah is saying to them that have respect, tawqeer. Tawqeer comes from waqar. You can ask any Arab speaking person, they'll tell you, tawqeer, waqar means honor, dignity, respect, self respect, ihtiram. Meaning, Rasulullah is saying in this hadith that the youngsters, the young, the children should respect their elders and the elders should have rahmah on their youngsters. That is how you make a society, that is how you make a community, that is how you ensure that there is peace and tranquility and not bickering and fighting and disputes and disengagement. And what is important in this hadith, my dear brother and sister Islam, which really makes me shiver to the spine, that Rasulullah at the end said, فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا Meaning, whoever does not do this, then they will not become the Ummah of Muhammad. A strong warning, a strong warning from Rasulullah saying that if you don't have rahmah on kids, on children, if you don't respect your elders and ihtiram for them, then you have nothing to do with Muhammad. Imagine Rasulullah disconnecting from us on Yom Al-Qiyam. Imagine him disorienting from us, disassociating from us. Denying that you are my ummati, denying that you are my follower because you did not have rahmah and mercy on youngsters and because you did not have wakar or tawqeed for the elders. Especially youngsters, I speak to you that as youngsters, we need to know that what is the, the ihtiram, the respect, the dignity for uncles and aunts in society. We should treat our elders, we should treat our uncle and aunts in society, in public, exactly the same way we treat our mother and father. If you, if you as a son or daughter curse your father, curse your mother, back talk to your father, back talk to your mother, and ridicule and ins, ins, uh, insult your father and mother at home, 
then I can perfectly understand you doing the same thing with anyone outside in public. If an uncle gets abused by a youngster, if an aunt gets ridiculed by a youngster, a teenager girl, I can understand that she or he must be doing the same thing with their father, mother. Because as you are with your parents, the way you are with others. But if you are very respectful, muaddab, muhtaram, with your abi, with your ummi, with your mother and father at home, then I will challenge you that you will never be disrespectful to the elders and aunts and uncles in society. This is a life experience phenomenon. It's something that is natural. Parents who invest in their children in ta'deeb, in adab, in ihtiram, they will see coming back to them. They will see the society telling them, MashaAllah, your son is so beautiful, so great. MashaAllah, your daughter is so amazing, so respectful. You know, they never disrespect, they never back talk or ridicule us, anyone in society. How did you raise such beautiful kids? Others will come and tell, talk to your parents. And this is the biggest reward that any father or mother can have. That someone comes up to them and says, MashaAllah, Mabrur, your son, your daughter is so muaddab, so respectful, so muhtaram, so beautiful. That will, that will be the biggest day for any father, any mother when somebody comes up. This is Baqiyatul Salihat from the man and by woman. We invest in our children. We leave behind God-fearing children. We will leave behind uh, uh, children, awlad, who make du'a for us, du'a maghfirah, who make hasanat in our name when we are gone and in our grave. Because there are so many parents who are mahroom, deprived of such. Their children are alive, but the children do nothing for their dead parents in the grave. And there are many lucky parents who every day in their grave, the malaika, the angels make munawwar, illumination. They make illumination in the grave for them. And they tell them, your son and daughter today did this. Your son and daughter today read Quran. Your son and daughter today made dua for you. Your son and daughter today built a well somewhere in a poor country in your name. Your son and daughter donated to this masjid in your name. These dead parents in the grave, they feel so happy that thank God, thank you Allah, I left behind a son and daughter who remembers me. While there are many, many son and daughters who don't remember their parents after their death. What a misery. What a misery. What a devastation. Today you are alive in front of them, they remember you. Tomorrow you're dead, what they say in English, out of sight, out of mind. My dad is dead, my mom is dead, to heck with it, I don't need to worry about it. And there are many who cry every day for their dead parents. There are many who make dua every day for their dead parents. This is the meaning of al-malu wal banun and zina to hayatul dunya. How to make the mal and banun not just zina of dunya, but zina of akhirah, zina of barzah, the grave, zina of yom al qiyamah, and, and the fakhr, the, the pride of yom al qiyamah that Allah will give them. Look, this is the children you left behind in the dunya. This is the money that you invested and left behind. This is all we got. Our money and children, this is all we got, brothers and sisters. We have nothing more than that. If we don't invest our money and children in the baqiyat of salihat, in the righteous good deeds and amals, in the dhikr and asqar, imagine that we leave behind children who don't pray. Imagine we leave behind children who don't fast in Ramadan. Imagine we leave behind children who don't give zakat when it's far upon them. Imagine we leave behind children who don't do umrah or hajj when it is far upon them. What kind of awlad are we leaving? The awlad that Allah is talking in the ayah. Al-man wal banuna zina to the hayat of dunya. Your money, your children, is just a glitter and glamour of dunya. As long as they're in dunya, they're fine. But once they're gone, they're gone. There is no akhirah. We can invest in our mal. We can invest in our banun, in our children. Such, they become the baqiyah. They become the everlasting. They become the sadaqah jariah. Every dollar we earn, we invest in some kind of project. In a masjid, in a school, in a madrasa, or in a hospital, or something that becomes baqiyat al-salihat. Every son and daughter that Allah has given me, I make tarbiyah. I make their education and mentoring and ta'aleem in such a beautiful way that they become a role model for other kids in society. This is the meaning of this ayah that Allah is making us, trying to make us understand that we should comprehend, that remember, when baqiyat al-salihat khayru inna rabbika. What is everlasting and better with your Lord is that you leave behind something that gives you dividends, profit. Every day in this dunya we wake up for what? Making money. On, on Wall Street, Dow Jones, 
what are they doing? Selling and buying stocks and things. They say, okay, give me four, give me five, give me ten, give me twenty. What are they making? The first thing they ask the broker, what is my dividend? What is my return? ROI. Your biggest ROI is your children, my dear brother and sister Islam. No good piling up huge mountains of money when you have children who don't remember you after you die. When you have children who everybody hates in society and say, I don't want to face that child. I don't want to face that person. They're very rude. They're very disrespectful. Their parents didn't teach them any manners. Is this the children we're going to leave behind? Is this the children we're going to leave behind? Or the one that I said earlier, where someone comes up to you and says, MashaAllah, your son, your daughter, so beautiful. They are very mu'adda, very respectful. My dear brother, sister, Islam, what this ayah is saying, watch your children, watch your son and daughters. Be aware of it. Teach them adab, teach them ihtiram, teach them how to talk to elders. Make sure you tell them that don't become a point of zillah. Zilla means humiliation. Our children can become a source of our humiliation when people in society say they are no good. And our children can become a source of pride and respectfulness when people say that they are the best in society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children. May Allah protect our families. May Allah give us the tawfiq to raise such God-fearing children, such muttaqi children. May Allah give our children hidayah, guidance for the righteousness. May Allah make our children al-baqiyatul salihat. May Allah make our children sadaqa jari for us and for our generations to come. أقول قول هذا واستغفر لك وسأل بسمي فاستغفر إنه غفور رحيم التائب من الذنب كما إن الذنب لا الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بزوج أما بعد اعلموا أن الله عمرنا بالصلاة والسلام على حبيب المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في القرآن الكريم كما ورد في سورة الأحزاب بعد عوض بالله الشيطان الرجيم إن الله ملائكة يسلطون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان على دوهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كن معهم ولهم يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظ دماءهم اللهم أرنا الحق حق وزن اتباء ورنا الباطل الباطل اجنابا اللهم إنا نسألك خير من فعلك عبد رسولك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من شر من فعل بك عبد رسولك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أدف المسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء من الأموات إنك أنت سميع جود الدعوات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظ من أنفسه